There's, a, there's an approved list of taxes, like you said earlier, that was approved. There's an act that listed them. Among them are pools betting and lotteries and uh, casino. The road taxes in, in many states are paid to the states, but here in FCT is still being collected by the BIO. Uh, there's a development levy. Uh, there's supposed to be some entertainment. You earn. There is a capital gains tax for individuals, individuals, and then there's um, withholding tax also for enterprises. So those are the type of taxes that we collect. Written and advertised to individual residents in the FCT to, to file their tax return by 31st of March 2020. I'm happy to say that there has been a lot of response from individual, but it can be better. Where are you? Hello? It's two minutes to go. A tax return and make sure that it goes in, uh, because we intend this year to start imposing penalties. No doubt. Tax as a way of fostering development when all taxable persons pay tax. For me, I will always pay my tax. What about you? Yes, you. You, listening to me. When was the last time you filed your tax return? For the FCT Internal Revenue Service, if you don't pay your tax, you have no moral justification to complain when certain social amenities are not working to expectation. Give back to the society by paying your tax. Remember, you are a stakeholder on tax matters. Test your question to us to enable us find answers to them. Talk back. Radio Nigeria, uplifting the people and uniting the nation. It's ten o'clock. Good morning and welcome to another edition of your Good Governance and Public Accountability Program on the network service of Radio Nigeria. Have your say. I'll be your guide, Olayemi Daniel. Thanks for being part of today's edition of the program. Now, the environment is an important preserve of every society the world over. In recent times, societies have been ravaged by disasters due to human activities or natural phenomena. From issues of global warming to climate change and environmental degradation, governments of various nations throughout the globe have continued to work around the clock to ensure a safer environment for their populace. In our country, Nigeria also, the federal government has not relented as it has placed emphasis on environmental safety.
waste management. Also, state governments have also keyed into this program to ensure that the uh, environment is safe for human beings. Now, how is the country faring on environment? To give better insight into the cons of conversation we have in the studio, the Minister of State for Environment, Mrs. Sharon Ikeazo. Honorable Minister, you're welcome to our studio. Thank you very much, Olaimi Daniel. Nigeria.gov.ng www.facebook.com forward slash Radio Nigeria Network or simply Radio Nigeria. Uh, the line to call is 0807-622-6771. The line once again is 0807-622-6771. SMS and WhatsApp as well, you can uh, get through to us on this line, 0807-622-6771. For incoming calls, remember to turn down the volume of your radio set to avoid a hold back. Please make sure your contributions are brief. And straight to the point to enable others call in and to speak with our guests as well. We'll take calls as they come. Welcome once again. Now straight to the business of the day. One fundamental ingredient to healthy living is a clean and conducive environment. Uh, Honorable Minister, now the, some of the troubles or troubling cases nation, nation are currently on the front. Okay, a lot of Nigerians will probably don't uh, realize that under the Ministry of Environment, we have the Environmental Health Registration Council. We okay. have Environmental Sanitation Officers under the Ministry of Environment. And we have actually deployed them. If you go around most of the ministries, starting with our ministry, you see them in their white uh, uniform, checking temperatures, and uh, handing out sanitizers. But before the outbreak of uh, the coronavirus, we had the Lassa fever outbreak. Yes. And Lassa fever is uh, an outcome of uh, unsanitary ways of uh, life. And the Herricon, the sanitation officers, have been going around towns in almost all the local governments in Nigeria, educating people, sensitizing people on how to keep their environment clean and to cover their foods and not to get uh, rats or the rats uh, droppings to get into their food. And if you notice, the level of uh, Lassa fever infections have been dropping drastically. Okay, now, um, are there particular places that we find them? Because I'm asking this in view of the fact that in the past, environmental health workers were visible at residential areas and at public places to ensure strict compliance to environmental standards. But some are saying that this is no longer so. Uh, we what, are, what's yes, in the past they used to be very visible. Incidentally, once I went out to lunch here in Abuja, restaurant in central area, and I saw an environmental health inspector belonging to the FCT present there. And I okay. asked, well, who are you? What are you doing here? This was before I came into the ministry. Oh, I see. And he said he's a sanitation inspector. Okay. So we actually, we actually have to from the federal level, reposition them, make sure that the states revive that uh, sanitation uh, inspector's uh, cadre okay. in every state so that they are more visible. But the ones Look at um, sanctions and enforcement. Yes. Um, when, when people default, when organizations default, uh, how do you sanction and what are these sanctions? We have three regulatory agencies under the Ministry of Environment. We have the NOSTRA, that's the Nigerian Oil Spill uh, Detection Regulation Agency. Agency. And we have NESRIA for the environment, and they're all established by ACTS. The third regulatory agency we have is the Nigerian Biosafety Management Agency. Okay. So uh, they, they are the ones who carry out uh, enforcement? Yes. They regulate and carry out enforcement. But the issue we have, I'm now talking as an ordinary Nigerian, we have all the laws and regulations. Yes. 
but enforcement is an issue. So with the new ministers at the helm of affairs in the, in the ministry, we are going to make sure that sanctions are applied. Okay. Yes, all the laws are there. That you do this, this is a consequence of your action. But at the same time, we have to go around and have a massive sensitization outreach to our people to okay. let them know the consequence of their action. Okay. That if you do this, this is consequence, you'll be fined or a jail term. Okay, before we continue, Honorable Minister, let's just announce this number. This is the WhatsApp line and uh, the, the, for WhatsApp messages only. The line is 0705. 8642473 the line once again is 0705 8642473 make sure you get across so that we can uh, you can have your say with the honorable minister so um back to you, honorable minister yes. the, there is an overwhelming campaign by the federal government through the minister of water resources to halt a major problem which is directly affecting the environment, which is open defecation, open defecation. in the country, yes, in order to re even to even reduce the spread of diseases as well, yes. and to make our environment safer. Yes. Uh, how is your ministry poised to assist towards implementing uh, presidential order 009? 009, executive yes, 009. order. Yes. Executive okay, order. Executive zero, order. Yes, 009. Okay. No, we are the ministry. We're glad that Ministry of uh, Water Resources has taken this up. In fact, under this administration, most ministries are now trying to work in collaboration. In the past, they always worked in silos. That's why we never got results. Okay. Incidentally, we just had an interministerial uh, committee on this uh, open defecation with the Minister of Water Resources. Environment plays a key role, as we had talked about the sanitation officers. Without the sanitation officers, who would enforce, who would inspect and make sure that we have sanitary uh, standards in Nigeria. Ministry of Education was involved as well because the key place that you have to start is not just the homes, the schools. That's we right. have hundreds of children in schools. So Ministry of Education has keyed in okay. and Ministry of Environment is driving it as well under our pollution control department. So the program has been on for, for some time. That's yes. uh, the campaign against open defecation. Yes. Um, how has been the response from Nigerians so far? Well, the response has been very good, okay. but we as a government have the responsibility to provide for our people uh, the toilets where they can, um, that they can use. Because if you do not provide these amenities, when nature calls, you know what happens. Any available space becomes, a becomes it. Yes. Our plan is that the 774 local governments in Nigeria will be open defecation free. Okay. Yes, uh, so and we're re relentlessly targeting this in collaboration with state governments. You know, everything you can't call on federal all the time. State governments have their own responsibility to their people as well. Okay, let's look at this other issue now. Apart from providing uh, public convenience, toilets yes. and so yes. on, there are parts of the country where people directly mm. um, use rivers, water bodies, especially those who live in the creeks or live directly on rivers. It's all part of how that how education as well, to let them know the linkage from their defecation into the water to their own health. Because that river might probably be the only source of water for washing, cooking, or drinking in their community. Okay, so the problem is all about campaign and publicity. It's all about campaign, educating, and, and providing the amenities. Okay, let's now move on to the ecosystem. Preserving the ecosystem is a priority of every nation. Yes. Uh, Nigeria is in, in inclusive. Do we have a blueprint to this effect, judging by our use of proceeds from, let's say, for instance, tree felling? W what's on ground to preserve our ecosystem and make sure that everything is in order? Of course, Nigeria has uh, its policies. On the same hand, we also have conservationists. We're now realizing what is happening. Even this uh, uh, coronavirus is linked to the ecosystem because we as humans are disturbing the ecosystem by deforestation. The natural habitat of the viruses are now being disturbed. The natural host they had 
in the ecosystem has been uh, disturbed. So they will look for a new host, which is the humans. Mm. So we all have to realize that. We have a campaign we started on um, reforestation and tree planting and conservation of our natural uh, parks. Okay. Yes. So um, in, in Abuja, for instance, there mm. are areas where we have parks um, meant for the, the earth to breed, uh, you know, to make sure that... The, the parks we have in Abuja are more recreational. Okay. When I talk about national parks, that is where we have all our animals. Okay. Yes. Okay, like the one we have in the Yankari, for instance. Yes, the, the one we have in uh, the Calabai area as well, where you have uh, gorillas, you have uh, okay. num uh, animals all in their natural uh, habitat. Uh, are we l talking about Obudu? Cattle Ranch? If no, not Obudu. Part, that's a different case. That's, yeah. a, that's a different case. Okay. Yes, natural wildlife parks. We have a, na a Nigerian wildlife uh, park um, agency okay. that's yes. there to preserve the animals in the wild and in the ecosystem. Then we're also trying to move on with uh, educate our people on the uh, conservations of our wetlands as well. You look at the mangroves in the Niger Delta. It's all been destroyed through oil uh, pollution, through man as well. These uh, mangroves are what keeps our ecosystem and the coastlines going, prevents flood and all that. Now, um, there is a popular saying that the youths are the leaders of tomorrow. Um, are there programs in order to uh, set their minds on the fact that the environment has to be protected no matter what? Oh, yes. My As years pass by. My main focus has been to work with the youth. We can't keep on saying that the leaders of tomorrow and we don't engage them. Incidentally, the last uh, conference of parties on climate change that are held in, uh, that are held in Madrid the Ministry of Environment sponsored five Nigerian youths to shadow the negotiators at the climate change uh, conference. You find the youths are the ones who will come up with innovative solutions okay. to combat climate change. So can you give us some of them? Are there some innovative ideas that you can tell Nigerians? Yes, like for instance, the solar dryers for the women in the River Rhine areas okay. to preserve their fish, and dry their fish and all that. Then also in conservation uh, area as well, we have the young ones who have started a campaign on conserving uh, the mangroves. Okay, let's move on to another issue which um, uh, the, the present administration has been uh, talking about repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the issue of the Lake Chard Basin. Yes. Uh, recently, officials of the Basin Commission visited the ministry. What was the reason for this visit, and what was the outcome? Uh, the, I realized that the Ministry of Environment is all-encompassing. The air we breathe, the land we are on, the water we have, it's all part of the environment. And who is the custodian of the environment in Nigeria? Who has the mandate to protect the environment is the Ministry of Environment. We've all been talking of uh, climate change. We all know the Lake Chad has been shrinking. And the resultant effect of the shrinking of the lake chart is that the people and their animals will have to find water. So they move looking for water. Then we get the herdsmen and uh, farmers' uh, clashes. I was quite impressed with what the strategy that the lake chart basin has drawn up. And I will urge Radio Nigeria to invite the executive secretary of the lake chart basin to educate. Uh, Nigerians. Nigerians on what they're doing. So we have planned to collaborate greatly with them because we also made it clear to them that those who suffer the most effect of the climate change crisis are the women. Okay. Yes. Uh, but and, ch and children, women and youth. So they have programs, livelihood programs for the women and youth. And of course they work closely with water resources in thinking of recharging the lake chart and uh, having earth dams in areas of the northeast, the three states that are the three uh, impacted uh, mm, ones from around is uh, Boronu, Yobe, and Adamawa states. Okay. Are there corporations uh, with the neighboring country, let's say uh, Chad, for instance? The Lake Chad uh, Basin has neighboring countries, yes. 
Okay. So there are uh, serious uh, collaborations with the other countries. So what specific steps are being taken? For, uh, I, I know you've given us some, but are there other specific steps being taken to reverse the trend of that lake drying up any further? I can't say that there are specific things being done now. It's a whole lot of uh, ideas, strategies that will have to be put in place to be executed and it can be done alone uh, with Nigeria. It has to be the surrounding states of that Lake Chad. Okay. Yes. All right. That's why I said the Lake Chad Basin Commission. We'll be, we'll, we'll be in position to give us more. No. We are there to lend support. Stop now. Daniel, enough of the Lake Chad. All right, let's move on to the issue of uh, environmental degradation. Erosion has continued to um, be a challenge in many areas across the country. Mm. In fact, a question we received specifically on mm. our Facebook platform mm. by one of our ardent listeners uh, from Akwaibom State, Namti Ita, mm -hmm. says uh, erosion is destroying farmlands and buildings here. That's where he is in uh, Udo Imwang Street mm. in Ewet Uyo. That's Ewet Uyo. Um, Honorable Minister, he wants to know what is the federal government doing about erosion, especially as uh, the rains are uh, coming in now. The federal government has been working in tackling erosion, and this is something that's very close to me, considering I'm from a number of states, which is one of the states that is most impacted by erosion. They're losing so much of their land mass. There is a new MAP uh, program. It's a Nigerian Erosion and Watershed uh, Management Program being done through the assistance of the World Bank. And most state governments, most state governments have keyed into the uh, new MAP uh, project to tackle the issue, issue of erosion in their states. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, some of the states now, mm. are they, uh, in what way are they keen into, uh, is in terms of counterpart funding? Yes, they bring, they bring their own counterpart funding. You find that every state establishes the new map project in their state. We at the federal now coordinate all the state uh, new map projects. So it's best for him to contact the Aquaibon State New Map Project Coordinator, because every state has a project coordinator for new map. Okay. Yes. If you're just joining us, the program is Have Your Say coming to you live on the network service of Radio Nigeria. And in the last 20 minutes on the program, we've been discussing with the Honorable Minister of State for the Environment, Mrs. Sharon Ikeazo. When we come back, we shall be looking at the Ogoni land cleanup in the Niger Delta region. And we shall also be taking calls from Nigerians as we announce uh, the numbers to call. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Radio Nigeria uplifting the people and uniting the nation World Health Organization don't talk say the corona sickness where they wahala the world na general head begeo. Because of this, eh, the federal government don't arrange one Ogbonge committee to make sure say Ninja they safe from this wahala. You safe, oh, you get your part to play to make Ninja free from this sickness. I beg, no touch the water on yama yama where they come out from the eye, mouth, plus including nose of person where they sick. If you see person where they cough, <laughs> sneeze, eh, tissue, I be person where they sick. I beg, give more chance and get mask to cover the mouth and nose of the person so that you feel protect others from the sickness. Wash your hand, go reach elbow every time with soap under water with the run. Hmm. No, they take medicine. Wait, Dakita, no tell you to take home. If you see, say, you they cough, sneeze, run for 40, go hospital where they near you. I beg. All those people, where they come from Obodo Yibo country, when the sickness day, may they report themselves and stay for their house for at least two weeks, even if they know they feel sick at all. I beg. Stay casual and keep Niger safe from coronavirus. This message, now public service announcement of Radio Nigeria. Let's have some beef. Nigerians are peace-loving and hard-working people. And countries only develop and grow when there is peace and stability. There are different kinds of problems in every society, and so in every country. If there are problems here, Nigeria is not an exception. There is no society, no country where violence and public disorder has solved a problem. No matter the problem, no matter the issue. Let us sit down like brothers and sisters. Use dialogue to resolve the problems. Remember... 
you have to give account of every action you take, if not here on earth, then before your creator. Please let us work together, together for, for a peaceful, peaceful Nigeria. Nigeria. Let us work together, Nigeria will be great. This is the last one. Change, stand up, Nigeria. Change is here and it's going to stay. Change begins with you. Oh yeah, make we go. Go to social level. Change begins from within. Look at you, yeah. Oh, get ruler. Change begins with you and me. message was brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Radio Nigeria, uplifting the people and uniting the nation. If you're just joining us, the program is Have Your Say, coming to you live on the network service of Radio Nigeria. Have Your Say is a good, uh, is a, uh, a good governance and public accountability program on the network service of Radio Nigeria. Uh, and in the last Less than 25 minutes, we've been speaking with the Honorable Minister of State for Environment, Mrs. Sharon Ikeazo, and she's been speaking on issues on how to preserve an, our environment and make it a safer place for every one of us. Uh, we have been receiving a number of messages uh, while we also as expect phone calls. Uh, the line to send us message on WhatsApp is 0807058642473. Once again, the line is 0705-864-2473. And the line to call is 0807-622-6771. The line, once again, to speak with us live is 0807-622-6771. Uh, we have a message already on our social media platform. Uh, that's WhatsApp. It says, good morning. The Minister of State has stated that the main grouse is enforcement. Can she elaborate how the Ministry intends to reverse this trend as the legislation is already in place, but it seems the Ministry itself tends to turn a bland, blind eye or put up an air of nonchalance? Well, wow, that's serious. How is the Ministry seeking to enforce the legislation that mandates all companies, uh, companies employ an environmental officer manager to help prevent the abuse of the environment from the affluence of wastes produced from the manufacturing process this message is from nicholas Adishina from apo here in here in abuja yes so we're still uh, expecting calls okay hello good morning the program morning. is have your say it's Adabu Nogu calling from just okay good uh, morning honorable minister good morning i'm Adabu. always delighted when i uh, when i uh, see uh, Capable women in uh, the threshold of uh, the you. development of this country. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Now, Mr. I want to know your own uh, say on ranching. You know, I think uh, I don't know why it's taking the government a very long time to ban open grazing nationwide and embrace ranching. This is a long way to address the issue of farmer headers classes, though in recent times it's not my class in becoming an attack. And again, the cattle, they are not even healthy enough because they are, they are just meant to be women and they can't produce enough uh, uh, quality milk and uh, meat and what have you. So I don't know why I want to, if you can tell Nigerians uh, why the federal government is taking them that length of time. Then another thing again is deforestation. Uh, deforestation. deforestation. Deforest, yes. You see now, mm. uh, I, I have a feeling that you know, an angry person, a hungry person, an angry man is a hungry, a hungry man is an angry man. Most times, people go and sell these trees, not because they, they, they want to, but the kerosene, which is uh, the, 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 uh, that, that is what most of the common people, that is the common man, makes use of to cook. It's no longer available. It's so expensive. You know, it's even more expensive than gas. But you know, the way gas is, most people cannot afford to buy even the cooker itself and all that. So what they find is that to lay their hands on is charcoal or or, or like, I mean, uh, the, the wood. 
So uh, there are several situations. I don't know what you are doing to advise the federal government to address this right. issue of high cost of kerosene. God bless Nigeria. Let's not give up on Nigeria. It's Thank a you. Well, sometimes, sometimes. Thank you, Adal Logo. Thank you, my, uh, Mrs. Onogo. Yes, you, I think we should take a few more calls, then you can now respond to uh, the two issues that have been, or the issues that have been raised. Yes, hello. Okay. You're on to have your say. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello? Okay, Honorable Minister, go ahead. Okay, you, you well, uh, in you. response to Adal Onogo. Okay, let's take this call. The call. Hello? There's a call coming in. Hello? Yeah, uh, hello. Yes, tell us who you are, where you are calling from, and then go ahead. Hello. I'm delighted. My name is Akesim Magubia. I'm calling from Kosovo State, you know, Baniku. Okay, uh, Akesim Magubia. Uh, go ahead. Stephen Agubia. Okay, Stephen Agubia. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm calling from Kosovo in Baniku, and I want to talk about the open education that the minister has Yes. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, in my local government, uh, when I traveled to Calabar, I came back, I was not aware that something like that is going on. I came, something happened that I went into a bush to, to help myself. I was put clearly over that. And I urge Nigeria in other parts of the country to stand on this thing because it's very good. But if you check in the local government where our state governor is coming from, First thing is not happening there, which is not good. They say, try to begin up. Hello? Hello, Stephen? Is it there? Okay, let's take your... Uh, hello, we have another caller. Good morning, tell us who you are, where you're calling from. Hello? Hello, hello yes. good morning, presenter. Yes, good morning. Tell us who hello. you are. Yes. Hello. 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 Here yeah, in Nigeria, they say, if you go to Florida, if you go to Calabar, say, there is no anybody that drinking a sugar cane and keep it aside. They have a minister in the that bring this box and put it inside here. And then in this Nigeria, especially here in northern Nigeria, they are drinking water and put it in top place. And then if you if the this 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 time around that the receiving are coming, and then they are bring this uh, this thing. Right, I would you. like to address that problem in Nigeria. Thank right. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Yes, the program is Have Your Say. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello? Okay, Honorable Minister, okay, you let can me, respond Let me go and respond, uh, especially to... I'll start with uh, Nicholas Adeshina. Yes, Ni Nicholas, yes, the uh, first... Adeshina. Uh, yes, Adeshina. Yes. Apple. I understand his concerns, but definitely the ministry is not uh, turning a blind eye or putting up an air of nonchalance. I had said earlier that we're going to reposition and strengthen the regulatory agencies to make sure they carry out the enforcement. I am here assuring Nigerians that the three regulatory agencies under the Ministry of Environment will work and enforce. I have done something similar when I was heading the pension board. All I did was use the act the legal framework establishing the pension board to carry out my duties. So it's the same thing we're going to do here. We know that in the past there has been a lot of negligence in terms of enforcement. But now the regulatory agencies will go out and enforce the laws because with Nigeria is not short of laws. So those enforcements will be carried out and we'll expect to get reports from the regulatory agencies that have offices all over the Federation. Okay. Then uh, we heard from Adal Nogu. Adal Nogu. Yes, she was talking, yes, yes, talking, she was about, talking about uh, ranching. Ranching, yes. Yes. Well, what to do? S some states have started ranching. Like I said, in everything in governance, you have to have the buy-in of your people, and you have to have uh, aw creating awareness as well. With time, it will catch on. Then on the issue of deforestation, there is no excuse to cut down our forests because we're destroying our own environment and committing what I always call and we call them um, ecocide. The ministry as well 
while we are talking about afforestation and trying to plant all the trees, we have to find alternative cooking methods for our women. We have the clean, the clean cook stove uh, initiative that was started in the past, but didn't go far. This is something that has to be revisited. Some young, some young people as well, part of their innovative ways, they're coming up with briquettes, which burns very well with less smoke, smoke okay. and less smoke inhalation for the women using it. And also using waste materials for these briquettes. Okay, to, to make them, uh, that's the, the waste to material, as or as briquettes now? To m turn the waste materials to bris the briquettes, okay. like rice husks. I have a young lady who is doing that okay. in Kaduna. These are things we have to introduce in our reforestation programs. Give them alternative means of cooking. If not, they will continue cutting down uh, trees. Yeah. Then um, uh, we had Nasiru from Zampara. He talked about sugarcane disposal and one or two other issues yes. that is common in the north. This brings me down to responsibility of state governments. Federal cannot carry all the burden of governance. The states are there as well, and they get their share of the federal allocation. The open defecation thing, states as well have keyed into this and are carrying it out. They should also contact the local government chairman and ask them questions. What are you doing with your allocation? What have you done about providing toilets for us? We should be able to question those representing yes, us right. as well. Okay, uh, that's also, I think it's also an, uh, an area around what uh, Stephen Agobia from Aquaibum State asked earlier yes. uh, about the open defecation campaign. And that how he hadn't seen, yeah, there. it hasn't gone down. Okay. So we have to push as well with uh, the line ministries who are part of this uh, open defecation uh, campaign to make sure it gets down to all the local governments in Nigeria. Okay, let's take uh, another call. Good morning. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello. Good morning, my good brother. Yes, tell us who you are and where you're calling from. My name is Samuel. Uh, uh, I'm calling from Joss. Samuel from Joss. Go ahead, please. Yes. I want to say that for you want to avoid deforestation, the price of kerosene, which is popularly used by the common man, must be brought down so to the lowest F. Down the volume of your radio set. Okay, it's too loud. That, Thank you very much. We've heard you, Samuel, and I'm sure the Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources is okay. hearing us as well. Exactly. Thank, you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Samuel. Okay. Is, uh, I was telling you that. Uh, Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Samuel. Very quickly, you have a minute. Hello? All right, uh, yeah, Honorable Minister, I, yes. I think he was talking about uh, uh, an issue around uh, the Defo deforestation. Thing, deforestation uh, yes, deforestation alternative, well. alternative uh, source of uh, okay. fuel for cooking. For cooking, no? yes. All right. I think these are issues that uh, the Honorable Minister had already, uh, already answered. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell us who you are and where you're calling from. The program is Have Your Say. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. You have a minute. Hello. We can hear you. Go yeah, ahead. Good morning to you. Yes, yeah. good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay, I'm calling from Zampara State. Zampara, okay. Go ahead. Tell us who you are. Your okay. name. My name is Muslim Muhammad Brennan Saba. Okay, go ahead. Brennan Saba. Okay, so, Honorable Minister, I want to uh, call the federal government. Yes, we're hearing you. Yes, you can hear. on the city. To do what on the uh, city? Why the federal government will not repair the facility or those land Hello. Hello, we didn't get that. Please repeat what if you said. I follow to you. Hello, hello. Berlin Saba. Okay. Uh, good morning. The program is Have Your Say. Tell us who you are and where you're coming from. Hello? Okay. Uh, Honorable Minister, let's take. Okay, we have a call. Yes, go ahead, please. Tell us who you are. Yeah, sorry, uh, I didn't check my phone before I called. My name is Stephen. I'm calling back. Okay, uh, uh, go, uh, Stephen from Cross River. Uh, we've yes, ma'am. We've answered to your issue of open defecation. No, 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 ma. I, I have other thing to say, please. You have less than a Hello? second. Yes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm very happy with the. The minister in the house because this thing has really helped me up and i want to talk about it i'm i have opportunity of saying it let me just say it out at once uh, in terms of uh, ranches the last time i went to ranch i didn't even know if that is ranch or not 
Please, we should. Our state government should do something about it, and the federal government should help for equally. If I eat, because I know that I don't know that the place, the, the place it belongs to federal government or state government because we don't know the difference. It's just like that. Where's casting man? It's not good at all. All right, thank you very much. Thank Steve. you very much. Thank I think you, I think we'll have to extend this uh, conversation to another day so I yes, come more definitely. often. Yes, because we'll everyone I can see is very interested in environmental issues. issues. Yes. All right. Uh, let's take a few messages from our WhatsApp platform. Uh, we have this one from Oladosu Adenike, one of the Nigerian youth delegates mm -hmm. for COP25 in Madrid, Spain, as mentioned by Honorable Minister of State for Environment. HMS is really trying her best, as Honorable Minister, to see how uh, we can have environmental san sanity. Her doors are always open to champion climate action for the people and the planet. That's a commendation. Chukwe Meka Odumegu. Odumegu wants the environmental ministry to do more sensitization, especially in NYSE camps, amateurs, and to students. He believes NYSE has no open defecation regulation. Okay. Um, uh, pro probably the environmental um, the situation Sorry. of uh, orientation camps, camps sanitation yes. there. Yes. That's what uh, Chukwe Meka is talking, is talking about. about. Yes, these are things that will have to be uh, looked, look, into. looked into. Let's see yes, if we have definitely. a few more calls, then you can Hello. respond to Hello, good yes. morning. Good morning. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. My name is Mohammed. I'm calling for Area 11, Abuja. Okay, Mohammed, what, please? Mohammed Sani. Sani from Area 11. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Honorable Minister, good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, I have a paper, uh, Waste Management Entrepreneurship Program for, I can provide uh, just for up to 500,000 Nigerians. Okay. I have been trying to see you at the office. I okay. don't know how to get okay. an appointment. Okay. Once, once you write once you write in, that's what I do with all the youth, once you write in yes. with your proposal, the Waste Management yes. uh, Under Pollution Control Department looks at it, and if it's a bankable project, we support it to go through for the good of... Uh, so, how do I get to present it to you? Just write it and uh, deliver it to the office. It will be brought to me. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, you say your name is, so I can look out for it. Your Ma name is what? Mohamed Sani. Mohamed Sani. Mohamed Sani. Sani. And it's a yes. waste management... Uh, yes. Okay. yes, and I've been to your office like three times. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Mohamed yeah. Sani, she, uh, just go ahead, uh, write, and then uh, she will respond accordingly. Okay. Thank you for calling. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, the line to reach us once again for WhatsApp only is 0705-864-2473. The line once again for WhatsApp, 0705-864-2473. For phone lines, you can reach us on 0807-622-6771. Yes, we have a caller. Good morning. Hello? Yeah, good morning. This is the radio senator. Mr. Andrew Ajayi. Andrew Ajayi, good morning. Go ahead. Yes, I am calling you from Portacot this morning. Okay. Madam Minister, well done. Thank you. Um, the, what I want to say as a Nigerian, mm. since you are the Minister for Environment, mm. is that uh, given the fact that uh, we have a lot of mosquito challenges, because your the activities of your ministry, if uh, not properly taken, uh, will have issues as it connects to the Ministry of Health. So I want to say, since we have mosquitoes, and mosquitoes are all over the stagnated gutters in Nigeria, because if you go from the streets of Kano to Guinea City to Delta and what have you, you see we have stagnated gutters. I, I want to encourage you to partner with state government and the local government so that there can be this clearance of this, you know, stagnated water portal that is all over where mosquitoes are breeding. Thank, thank, thank you very thank much. And you help us as well you to engage with, you with your state with government. government. Thank you, Andrew. Where you are in Port Harcourt. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you, Andrew. Hello. Hello, good morning. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello. Okay, Honorable Minister. At this time, let's look at some of the questions that are still awaiting your response. We were talking about the um, Ogoni land cleanup in the Niger Delta. Yeah. What's the situation right now as we speak? Okay, that's one. And what do we hope to see in, uh, let's say, in another one year, for instance? No, that is one of the key mandates of uh, the Ministry of uh, Environment through the promises made to the Niger Delta people by the President for the cleanup of uh, Ogoni land. My colleague, uh, Honorable Minister, 
has paid several visits to the sites in Ogoni land in the space of six months since we have uh, come in to oversee the progress of the work being done with UNEP uh, overseeing what's happening and going by the UNEP reports. We intend uh, to see the cleanup brought to a conclusion. Then talking of that Ogoni cleanup, it now brings me to the issue of Potakot suit. I'm surprised no one called in. Well, sometimes it happens that way. Yes. Probably because it's uh, still in court. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, for the organic cleanup, it's going on according to the UNEP. Uh, let, let, let's take this call on over, Minister. Hello. Mm -hmm. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Go ahead, please. Tell us who you are and where you're calling yes. from. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Good morning. Pleasure talking to you. Yeah, go ahead, yes. please. I'm um, Ahmed Muhammad Ibrahim calling from Kano State. Ahmed from uh, Kano, yes. Ahmed Go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, all, it's all about the open deprecation in, 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 in the country, most especially in our area. There. You know, we are the most populated state in Nigeria. Mm. And we have a whole lot of uh, public uh, commercial toilets that will pay people pay money before okay. they use it. Yes. So I don't know what the federal government and the state government are doing about it. Okay. Madam, uh, what can you say about it? Are you saying in terms of partnership with you? No, no, no. With, with this uh, toilet? Making uh, payments. Okay. I understand. Those are probably okay. private initiatives Precise. by the, maybe the market association or the unions in markets that establish those toilets and you pay a token to use it. So it's for state governments to provide more facilities and also, you can understand them charging money for it. You'll have to pay something for them to be able to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So we are talking and partnering with state uh, governments for them to do their bit. But the citizens in those states should be able to hold their uh, state governments accountable as well in delivering services to them, okay. starting from the local government level up to the state governor. All right, let's Th take thank you very much, uh, Mohammed from Kano. Right, let's take this call. Hello. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from, please. We can hear you. Go ahead. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Okay, Honorable Minister, you are talking about the Ogoni cleanup. Yes, uh, that is going on. So yes, according to the, in line with the UNEP uh, report. But while the Ogoni cleanup is going on, another issue, so dust, yes. the suit. But I don't actually call it Potakot suit. I like to call it what it is, Bofaya. 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 If you're from, from Port Harcourt, you understand, understand what, what I'm saying. Means. Okay. Bofaya are the illegal refineries going on that they are burning oil every day. Okay. Yes. So uh, are we saying that it's uh, their activities that has uh, led to uh, the situation we have? In uh, Port Harcourt for the suit. Yes. Okay. And we have to okay. tackle this. And we are beginning to tackle it. And I'm glad that the River State Government has keyed in as well to it because we've NOSDRA is the regulatory arm of the uh, Ministry of Environment in the oil and gas sector. So, so From their reports, yes, they've done uh, their reports. They have over 80 legal refining points discovered in the Niger Delta, in River State and uh, Delta State particularly, in 37 locations. Okay. And we have laboratory analysis that have shown that this suit is from uh, petroleum combustion. So Nostra is working in partnership with uh, the JTF and the Navy to come up with the uh, operating uh, procedure to, to guide the JTF as well in managing the Siliga refineries and dismantling them in an environmental friendly manner. So uh, are we saying that uh, the other uh, legally or registered companies in that part of the country are not also part of the fault um, or, or causing the Port Harcourt suit? What we're cleaning up in Ogoni was caused by them, by the oil majors. That is why they are contributing to the cleanup. They are paying for the cleanup of Ogoni land. Okay. But I'm saying on the flip side, we have another degradation, purely ecocide happening in the Delta region through the activities of the illegal refineries that we have to tackle because these are our own children doing this. So this, this, will, be, this will be a conversation.
for another day and I would like to hear from the Port Harcourt people because we have to collaborate with the River State Government to tackle this and find alternative means of livelihood for our sons and daughters who are engaged in, in Bufaya. But Bufaya has to end. We have to end as soon as the Port Harcourt immediately, soon, immediately for the health of our people oh. in River State. All right, let's quickly take uh, just a few more calls and some messages. Yes, but tell us who you are and where you're calling from, please. Hello, good morning. Yeah. My name is Okoro John Friday. From where? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Enugu State. Okay. Enugu. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, please, I want to make a contribution concerning our mm. environment. Because today, like in Enugu, the, we have a swammer. Though, though they are really managing waste. But um, sometimes we, the individuals, are not helping. Because, like, in front of my place, I do sweep gutter every day. People will, will kind of they discard uh, waste anyhow. But my major concern now is, you know, nylon a major uh, threat to our soil. Yeah. Yes. And the gutter will carry those nylon away from the gutter and dump them somewhere. As in time, in, in future to come, those nylon will escalate all over the land and will cause harm for our crops and other plants. If there's any measure they can take, maybe separating or any measure they can take. Yes, you're talking about re re recycling. Thank you, ve thank you very yes, much, John. Yes, thank Please you, keep John. on yes. being the environmental champion you are. Keep your environment yes, clean. Get no, others to what, copy what you're doing. Hello, John. But what, we have what, a waste what? management policy. Hello, John. Thank you mm. very much. All right. Yes, that mm. was even taking us to the next question, which is mm. on uh, recycling, recycling waste yes. to wealth as mm -hmm. being practiced mm -hmm. in other parts of the country. So are there modalities to achieve this? and to take it to the next level. Yes, we have a waste management policy already in place from the Ministry of Environment. And we've also started combating uh, waste through the establishment of a community-based uh, uh, waste management project, recycling plants, okay. actually. Okay, and uh, so where, uh, are there some locations? Yes, there's one. We just uh, commissioned one in Cairo. Okay, here in Abuja? Yes. In Nasarawa State, in Nasarawa Ka Karo State. is like yeah, Nasarawa State, not FCT. Forgive me for that. Forgive me for yes, that. and another one in Lokoja. Okay. And we intend to establish more recycling plants. Lagos is doing very well in terms of uh, recycling. And this is where our youth come in as well. Because through recycling, we can have what we call the circular economy. Those okay. who pick, those who recycle. And it comes back. And it comes like back. Yes. Well, are used to be gainfully employed. These are con conversations we will need to be having in future to make sure that everyone is involved. Okay, let's take a few messages from our WhatsApp uh, platform. Iken Oche from Lagos says, Madam Sharon left the brilliant legacy at PTAD. We believe she will achieve the same with our degraded environment in terms of desertification, erosion, pollution, waste management, and industrial if, if, uh, effluences. God bless Nigeria. A big amen to that. Uh, the next uh, contributor, Kanife Nabuike Ogochuku from Fedebo Ibarapa, Central Local Government Area of your state, says, Good morning. Please, this issue of deforestation is too much. We need to do something about it. My question is, how can Ministry of Environment help communities to plant more trees to avoid def deforestation? We have the land, but want partnership with government. So that's uh, from Kanife. Okay. 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 I'll take the Oyo one. Okay. I'm glad that you're in Oyo State. We have the Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria, which is an agency under the Ministry of Environment in Ibado. You can get your seedlings and start planting. But if you have any other larger scope or tree planting uh, program you intend to carry out, you can uh, contact your state government and see how you can uh, partner with them to get that done. Every one of us can start planting trees from wherever we are. Okay. Yes. We have uh, time to take a few more calls. Uh, hello, tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear us? Okay. Uh, good morning. Yes, good morning. Tell us who you are good and where morning. you're calling from. Yes. Yes, the minister can uh, hear I you. Just go ahead. The, one of the, uh, one Tell of us the who you are. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Hello? 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 I can James from Michelin. Which state? Hello? Michelin. I think oh, yeah. the solution to this problem is by having clean, clear, and clean environment in Nigeria. 
so that you will not be free from uh, any disease at this attacking us. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Hi, thank right. you very much. Uh, it's all thank about you. Uh, environment. Clean, yes, clean, uh, environment. clean environment, yes. yes okay. Uh, hello? Hello, good morning. Tell us who, who you are and where you're calling from. Hello? Hello? Okay, we don't have any. Hello, yes, good morning. Hello, you need to speak louder. We can't hear you. You're too low. Hello? Okay, my name is Muslim Muhammad bin Zaba. Okay, you called earlier. Okay. Uh, are, are you giving a different contribution? Hello, sir. Hello? Yeah, I'm calling from the first state. Zamfara? Okay. Go uh, ahead, please make it brief. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, we can hear you. Make it quick. Uh, uh, I want to call the minister in order to uh, take responsibility about the uh, Leno. You see Leno, the city, plenty Leno. Like Security? The total Leno, all Leno, you see them plenty in the country. Okay, nylon. Nylon, okay. Uh, so well, yes, leather. Mm -hmm. so that's why I tell you, oh. we call the attention of the federal government in order to take responsibility. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Muslim Mohammed. Talking about um, waste uh, disposal of uh, nylon bags, which is uh, very common in our country. Uh, there are uh, scientists have even said that in another 50 uh, or close to 100 years, we might have challenges in the agricultural sector because there's too much nylon in our soil. We've, we've already started. We don't need to wait 50 years for you to get there. The ministry has already started uh, working and talking with uh, development partners to find alternatives to the plastic, okay. what we normally call nylon or leather. Leather. We have to find, before the advent of nylon and leather, we had the moi moi leaf. Remember that plant? Yes. In fact, there's a program that has started in a state, uh, in a village, in a, I think it's Oshun State, where women are being given grants to start planning, uh, planting those uh, leaves. So if you can replicate that in other states, it's an alternative to the plastic to because of the indiscriminate uh, disposal. Uh, uh, is there a possibility that some of these uh, companies, uh, uh, you know, p uh, p uh, given some kind of uh, punishment or fines? Yes, yes, there's going to be a uh, manufacturer responsibility as okay. well. They're all part of that. Uh, uh, value chain of uh, recycling. We've been talking with the food and uh, beverage uh, manufacturers of Nigeria. The Nestle's, the Coca Cola's, they're all part of it. All right, uh, there's a question here from Adit Turner from Abuja. He says, as regards environment, what measures is the ministry taking to synergize with the undocumented scavengers who pick and buy domestic and urban waste from the public? Uh, are they that's helping, part, that's part are they helping that, the situation? That's part of that circular economy as well that we were talking about. Okay. Nezria is working out to registering most of these people, the pickers, the sorters, the recyclers. Now, there was a time where um, the government was hard on the, the Bofaya. Uh, forgive me for taking us back to that mm. uh, because we have many Nigerians who are interested. Now, this Bofaya, are there possibilities that um, they can be given license to practice uh, their trade in a more, uh, in a safer way. That's where, the issue, that's, that's where the issue of uh, modular refineries come in. They yes. can form themselves yes. into cooperatives and okay. establish uh, modular refineries, which is safer for their, for themselves, for their own health, and for the environment. And I'm glad uh, River State Government has taken that up because this was a statement I made when I went to commission the Nostra reference lab in Potaco and the deputy governor of Rivers was present. Okay. I have seen that she's now started community engagement in those areas where the co fire is going on. Okay, to so see that, how they can see how the, the okay. state government can get involved in establishing modular refineries. Because okay. we must have an alternative means of livelihood Modern. for our people so that it will not have uh, security uh, implication. Uh, well, our time is far spent now. Yes. I, is there any form of collaboration between your ministry and development partners uh, in actualizing a safer environment for the nation? Uh, and in which particular areas are these partners interested in? 
and then you can round it up with a general advice to Nigerians we and what we should expect. Yes, we do have a lot of uh, development partners. I've just mentioned the UNEP, United Nations Environmental uh, Program. They are the ones that carried out the environmental uh, audit of uh, the Ogoni land and brought out their UNEP report, which we are now following and implementing by doing the Ogoni cleanup. So that's one in the oil and uh, oil degradation uh, aspect. Waste management, we're working with a lot of uh, donor agencies, UNDP, the Japanese government through uh, JICA, okay. the EU as well, then even in, even in climate change as well, a lot of the donor agencies are working with us in everything environmental. All right. Honourable Minister, we wish thank to you. thank you so much for being part of today's programme and we hope that you respond next time we come calling for you. Thank you for having me and I hope to come back more often so All that right. we keep on having the conversation thank about you so the environment. Much. Yes, at this time, this is about the size of it on today's edition of Have Your Say. We wish to thank the production crew in person of the news producers, Conrad Labe and Hassan Hussein, online editors, Timothy Bamidele, ICT Israel Tio Kaha. Studio Manager, Prince Afonia Ugweze. Engineer, Hassan Usman. Cameras, Sadiq Saromi and Fuluwa Oluyede. Facilitator, Oluwa Damilolaoni. Producer, Oledo Mbiwe. And Executive Producer, Sani Suleiman. Special thanks to the Director General, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, Dr. Mansur Liman, for giving us this platform. I am Olayemi Daniel, urging you to wash your hands and ensure that you stay safe. And join us next time.